Good day, I am Marisol Fernandez from BECE1A. For today, I'll be discussing the toxic and hazardous waste treatment. What is toxic and hazardous waste? According to EPA, toxic waste is only waste that is harmful or fatal to living organisms when absorbed or ingested. Hazardous waste is the lower level of potentially harmful substances. Toxic is higher. Hazardous waste can be but isn't necessarily toxic. All toxic is hazardous. The toxic waste. Chemical waste capable of causing death or injury to life. Waste is considered toxic if it is poisonous, radioactive, explosive, carcinogenic that causes cancer, mutagenic that causes damage to chromosomes, teratogenic causing birth defects, or bioaccumulative that is increasing in concentration at the higher ends of the food chains. Waste containing dangerous pathogens such as syringe is sometimes considered to be toxic waste. Poisoning occurs when toxic waste is ingested, inhaled, or absorbed by the skin. On the other hand, hazardous waste is simply defined as a waste with properties that makes it dangerous or capable of having a harmful effect on human health or on the environment. Examples of toxic and hazardous waste are car batteries, pesticides, light bulbs, and used motor oils. This waste can cause harmful effect on both human and on the environment. And to eliminate and control this waste, we must know what is waste treatment. So the waste treatment means physical, thermal, chemical, or biological processes, including sorting, which change the characteristic of the waste in order to reduce its volume or hazardous nature, facilitate its handling, or enhance recovery, and shall include waste management. For this, waste disposal methods include landfills, incineration, the three R's, waste compaction, vermicomposting, biogas generation, and composting. So first we have the landfill. A landfill site, also known as a tip, dump, rubbish dump, garbage dump, or dumping ground. It is a site for the disposal of waste materials. Landfill is the oldest and most common form of waste disposal. All through the systematic burgle of the waste with daily, intermediate and final covers only began in the 1940s. In the past, refuse was simply left in piles or thrown into pits. In archaeology, this is known as a midden. There are three categories of landfill. First, the municipal waste. Second, the industrial waste, and the third is the hazardous waste. For the first category, we have the municipal solid waste. A municipal solid waste landfill or the MSWLF is a discrete area of land or excavation that receives household waste. A MSWLF may also receive other types of non-hazardous waste such as commercial solid waste, non-hazardous sludge, conditionally exempt small quality generator waste, and industrial non-hazardous solid waste. The second one is the industrial waste. An industrial waste landfill is any landfill other than a municipal solid waste landfill. A Resource Conservation and Recovery Act or RCRA, subtitle C, Hazardous Waste Landfill, or a Toxic Substances Control Act Hazardous Waste Landfill. For the last category of the landfill, we have an Hazardous Waste Landfill. It is a treatment, storage, and disposal facility, or the TSDF, and as much 
must be appropriately permitted and the permit will specify all design and operating practices necessary to ensure compliance landfill controls. Next, we have ensargination. Ensargination is a waste treatment process that involves the combustion of substances contained in waste materials. Industrial plants for waste incineration are commonly referred to us as waste to energy facilities. Incineration and other high temperature waste treatment systems are described as thermal treatment. So this picture describes how the incineration work. The three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. The first one is reduce. As you likely reduce from it being the first of the three R's. Reducing is the best way to go about managing solid waste. It's quite simply really. The less you use, the less waste you will produce. The R causes the most unease in con consumers because we tend to think we need to cut back on everything or we won't be making an impact. This is not the case, though by just doing a few things to cut back, you can noticeably reduce your waste without totally altering your, your lifestyle. You could do this by buying products with less packaging. Did you know that 30% of the waste in our landfills comes from product packaging? When shopping for items, choose the ones in just one bag or bag as opposed to those that are double and triple package. Second, buying products in bulk. By buying more of the same item all at once, you reduce the overall amount of packaging you will encounter. Try to stay away from disposable goods, in particular paper plates, cups, and plastic utensils. Buy durable goods, especially when making a big purchase, look into the history and reviews of the item you are buying. By buying something that will last you, help to make sure waste will stay out of the landfills for longer. Reuse. The second R is for reuse. This one is becoming more and more popular with the surge of upcycling and craft projects all over the web. If you reuse something as opposed to throwing it away, you keep waste out of landfills and create something new. A quick internet search can open a world of ideas or you can try any of the following. Don't automatically throw away items that are broken. Several can be reused and turned into great new things. Use sellable container, containers rather than plastic wrap. Invest in some reusable shopping bags or bag all plastics once with, once with you to the store. Look into upcycling ideas for common household items. Many have alternative uses you may never have thought about. Embrace hand-me-down as as a younger sibling, I can understand wanting clothes of your own, but if you have kids of similar ages, try to supplement wardrobes with some hand-me-down as well. Another option is to shop second-hand stores or consignment shops. That way, the items will be totally new to you while still helping to reuse someone else's potential waste. Recycle the final and probably the best known R stands for recycling. As you probably know, recycling is the process of remanufacturing a product to be sold as new. Along with the basics of paper, plastic, glass, and cardboard, there are tons of items which can be recycled that you may not even realize. And remember, recycling only works if you can the process by buying recycled materials. Start recycling today by doing any of the following. Check with your municipal garbage company to see if they have a recycling option as well. This can help make recycling even easier. Check with local recycling facilities to see what items they accept. 
start an office recycling program. The fourth waste disposal method is the waste compaction. Waste compaction is the process of compacting waste, reducing it in size. Garbage compactors and waste collection vehicles compress waste so that more of it can be stored in the same space. Waste is compacted again and more thoroughly and at the landfill to conserve valuable airspace and to extend the landfill's lifespan. Next is the vermicomposting. Vermicompost is the product of the de decomposition process using various species of worms, usually red ringrels, wild worms, and other earthworms, to create a mixture of decomposing vi vi vegetable or food waste, beading materials, and vermicast. Then, biogas generation. Biogas protects the air, water, and soil. In addition to being profitable, it is a safe and responsible waste management system that has a net positive impact on the environment. The last waste disposal method is the composting. Composting is a process by which organic waste are broken down by microorganisms, generally bacteria and fungi into simpler forms. The microorganisms use the carbon in the waste as an energy source. The degradation of the nitrogen-containing materials results in the breakdown of the original materials into a much more uniform product which can be used as a soil amendment. Heat generated during the process kills many unwanted organisms such as weed seeds and pathogens. Advantages of composting include re reduction of waste volume, elimination of heat-killed pests, and the generation of a beneficial and marketable material. Adding compost to soil increases organic matter content. This, in turn, improves man many soil characteristics and allows for the slow release of nutrients for crop, crop use in subsequent years as to summarize waste disposal is an activity that is directly responsible for much environmental damage and locating waste disposal sites determining what waste materials were supposed of through time and exactly where and determining ownership and whether disposal methods were proper or improper are important issues in environmental litigation here are the references about my topic and that would be all. Thank you and God bless us all everyone. Bye.